Welcome back, beautiful souls. And uh, this week, today, I'm going to share with you um, an interesting topic, one that is at the forefront of most people in their daily life even, and that's about not just life, which I'll start with first, but transitioning or what some people would call, you know, death. So I don't really like to call it death because I don't believe there is any death. I believe there is life and more life again. And even backing up to that before you enter this body, you are living, you are a living, breathing being in essence in another way. Um, so understand that this, this is what I've come to believe this is what makes sense to me. You make up your own minds. So I'm just going to share some um, information around this because it may actually help you with, you know, what is coming for all of us and that we do transition. Um, for a lot of people who are transitioning, they can struggle with going into that, you know, returning to who they are or who they've become more so. Um, because there's a, a lot of fear around it. Um, they can be hanging on to a lot of things here on planet Earth. There's many reasons. So um, I want to back up and say, you know, let's start with life first. So when, you know, a mother is carrying a baby, when that baby's conceived and it grows, my belief system is that that being is not in that baby all the time. I believe that it can come and go. I believe mostly it's observing the being before it enters the actual physical body. Some people might argue, well, how does it, how does it exist then? Well, everything is consciousness. Even your body is a separate consciousness to who you are. This body is a vehicle, okay, and you get to be the driver in it. But your cells, you're not telling your cells what to do. Actually, you are by the way that you feel and you think. But it's not like you're saying, come on, heart, pump, blood, okay, lungs, now breathe. You know, it has its own mechanism. It has its own consciousness. It is brilliant in its own right. Um, it just has an innate knowing. And you would say, well, how does how could that be? which is a really great question because it is consciousness. So, of course, you are inhibiting um, in this space. And when you're not here, meaning when you're asleep, when you go to sleep at night, you do leave your body. For some of you, you may astro travel. For some of you, you may return to your source, which is, you know, what we mostly do because that's where healing takes place. We get out of the way of our body, let everything come into alignment, just let the body do its own thing, which you really need at least a good minimum four hours for the body to do that. Six is great. Some people need more. And then come back into the body, and that's what you do upon awakening. So every night you kind of die, you transition, and every morning when you wake up, you come back, you're coming back into your body. And an interesting thing is that I'm thinking about right now is, have you ever been so tired that when you fall asleep, you literally fall into sleep or fall out of sleep, you feel yourself falling and if you don't let yourself go, you do that. Have you ever had that? It's like a, I've had it many times. It's like you're not relaxing. It's like you're not, I read once that it's, you're releasing yourself too fast. Um, could be a combination of that and not letting yourself relax and go. So that's, that is an interesting feeling that, and you see babies do it, their reflexes um, when they sleep, almost like they're falling more into the deeper sleep and whatever else is going on there. Um, so when a baby is within, you know, the mother's tummy, it, it is life. But the actual essence of the being, the soul, you, the personality, I believe is sort of observing, maybe coming into the body when it's progressed along the way. I don't really feel it stays there for long periods. I feel like when that baby is born, when it takes its first breath for the most part, and I think it's an individual thing you are choosing from that state of what you want. I think it is more towards the end. That's my feeling. And when you take that breath, um, that is when you're breathing your life 
into that physical apparatus because the breath is your connection. Even though babies are breathing inside of us, they're swallowing water or whatever they're doing, they're not breathing air, we know that. Um, I'm not going to get too technical because I don't know all the bits and pieces, but it's not until you're born that you're actually breathing oxygen, you're breathing air. And breathing is the connection to your source. People who shallow breathe, they breathe up here a lot. They're very anxious. They're, some of us can spend the day holding our breath, not breathing properly. It's very important when you watch a baby. So when a baby's born and as it you know, becomes a toddler, you'll observe a baby breathing into its belly. You'll see the belly go up and down. So it is good to take some deep breaths and just you know that when you take a deep breath, even if you do that three times, you relax straight away. You feel the fullness, besides the fact that more oxygen is going into your brain and other spaces, but it, it is a calming, soothing mechanism. So if you can pause and do that a couple of times a day, just be conscious of that, that is quite powerful because the more you can breathe, you don't want to breathe deeply all the time because you will pass out, but if you can Spend more time breathing more in depth, not holding your breath or shallow breathing. It will change everything. It will change your anatomy, your physiology. It will change the way you feel. It's very calming. When I meditate 15, 20 minutes a day, med meditation can be very simple. It can be just following the breath, breathing in and out and doing a couple of deep breaths at first and then just letting it flow in and out and listening to the breath. And when you focus on that, everything else goes away. You are really clearing and in sync with who you are. And it's a good way to just detach. It's a good way to unplug. Um, of course, you don't want to do this all day. You're meant to think, you're meant to do, you're meant to have fun, you're meant to have experiences, okay? You don't need to be guruing, what do you want to call it, all day long. It's just little spurts. So if you can do it 10, 15 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, whatever you want, put a timer on and, you know, and even just, even if you do it during the week and then on the weekends, maybe just let yourself go however you want. So it doesn't become to overwhelmingly like a routine where I've got to go do this. Something you want to look forward to. So the breath is everything. And there's a lot of breath work out there, but the breath is connection to the life force. So much so that your energy is in it, your personality is in it, your connection is in it, because when you stop breathing and you release from this body, you, you're gone. So your breath is your connection to your source. Um, what else did I want to share with you? Um, so I've got a note there about re-energizing. Not really sure what, that, what I was thinking when I wrote that, but I pretty much covered a lot. Okay, so what I want to come around with to say is that whatever your belief system is, it's perfect for you. It's right for you. So if you don't believe there's any life after this life, life after death as some people call it, then that's fine if that serves you. But is that serving you? You have come from somewhere, you will return there. And not only that, have you come and a part of you has come, it is always connected to that. And the way you know that is by the way that you feel. So when you feel good, when you feel happy, when you feel joy, when you feel content, when you feel any positive emotion, you're very much connected to your source. When you feel negative emotion, you are moving away from who you are. Perfectly fine. It's part of being human, but not really ideal to hang out there for long periods. You really want to come back quickly and try and remain close to your source of who you are, where you just feel happy, content, whatever it is, okay? Again, I'm not pushing against not to feel negative emotion. It is part of the human experience and it is allowing it. It is not to pretend it's not there. Whatever it is, it's there. Let it come up. And then allow yourself to gently shift back. Acknowledge it. That's okay. It's just telling me something. Thank you for being there. And now I just want to feel a little better. So you can think your way to feeling a little better. You can feel your way to feeling a little better. And you can do your way to feeling better. Sometimes you just need to go for a walk. 
Sometimes you just think a thought that makes you feel better. Sometimes you can just feel that something, feeling another feeling makes you feel better. So there are many ways to come into your alignment. Um, so beyond this physical realm, there is non-physical and it is always there. And you will question it at times when things happen to you. Um, when you return to your source, you are returning to the expansion of who you are, who you've become. Now, for some of you, you may have expanded on this planet because that's the work. The work is to have an experience, your soul expands up here, it takes the hit every time, it takes the expansion, and then it's your job to come into alignment with that and feel what that expansion feels like. So basically to get your manifestations, I'm not talking about just physical, I'm talking about feeling manifestations. So if you're someone who's chronically sad all the time, your soul over here has become happy and happier every time you've become sad. And the sadder you become, the, the greater the gap, the, the more your, your souls become happy. And it's standing here stronger, 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 and that's why you feel crappier and the gap gets bigger till you stop and say, well, there's a reason why I feel that sad or this chronic sadness and I may not know what it is. However, I would like to feel less sad. See, that brings you closer. Oh, that feels better already. This is nice. I like this. See what happens? Now, it can happen very fast. It can take some time. It depends on how much resistance you've got going on there. So whatever's happening in your life, you can just stop and say it is what it is. The moment you do that, you ground, you, you plant your feet, and now you can move forward. Now you can say, okay, now what would make me feel better right now? Maybe just being where I am is enough right now. I've just moved a bit. So your soul is always expanding because of you, because of the human life you're experiencing, and your job is to come into alignment, to, to find ways to um, experience and benefit you know, you want to reap the reward. You want to reap the harvest. You've done the hard work. Now it's time to come into alignment. So that when you do leave this body, if you have experienced that a lot, you will still feel expansion, probably not as much as someone who didn't come into alignment in their physical life. So, you know, it's an enlightenment, it's an expansion, it's leaving behind all the negative that is human and feeling the unconditional love and the positive. And that's what you go into when you transition. You don't have to die or transition to experience that. You can find ways to feel that in your life now because that is who you're meant to be. You're meant to feel joy. You're meant to be happy most of the time. Things are supposed to work out for you. You are meant to be well. Sometimes stuff happens. And, and that doesn't go that way. That's okay. Just come back to things are meant to go well for me. I want things to go well. Things work out for me. Now, you don't, you don't wait till things are bad to start saying all that. You start saying it now so that when something does go awry, you can say, that's okay. Things do work out for me. It'll figure out. So you've got this backup. So if you're having concerns about the afterlife, I would call it more life. You can start to calm yourself and, and start to realise it doesn't make sense just to live one life. It doesn't make sense just to come from nothing and then die and nothing exists. It doesn't make sense. And you know how it doesn't make sense? Because you have so much love inside of your heart if you allow it to feel it. You know there's so much more going on. Love is very hard to explain, to put into words. It is a feeling, many feelings. You can put it into words, but for some people it's, there's no words that can encapsulate that. And so it's important to remember that you are a spiritual being having a human experience. You've had, had many human experiences and you will have many more and your life is about what? It's about finding joy, finding happiness, peace, discovering things, discovering things about myself, excitement, curiosity. That's what I think. What do you think? Have you stopped and made a decision? Have you stopped to say, well, what is life meant to be? It's what you want it to be. 
But under all that, you are meant to feel joy. You are meant to feel happiness somewhat. Now, some people would say, well, I can't feel that under terrible circumstances, and I get that. But after you've wrestled with that terrible circumstance for a year or two or three or four or however long you want to just keep letting it wrestle you, you want to stop and go, hang on a minute. What if I could just think a little different and say, well, I want, I just want things to be better. I'm just going to decide every day for the next 30 days, I want it to be better. I want things to go well. I'm going to look for some things that are good. Then you'll discover that you can start to change your life. Now, when you can understand or grasp that you are, you know, a spiritual being, non-physical, becoming, you know, in this physical experience, there's so much more going on. This is just a part of you. This is a human part, a beautiful human part to experience. There's so much wonderful in this physical reality of what you can do. But it's not the end, meaning this is not just the one life you will live. There are many. So start enjoying it now because you are life eternal ever after. You will never stop being. You will never stop being because that's the source of where you've come from. So start looking at enjoyment now. Start looking at what makes me happy now. What can I do? What do I want to do? Start putting things to rest, putting them to bed of what did I learn from that so I can move on. When you know you're eternal and you know that you're more than your physical body and you can have those experiences, it really will change your whole paradigm. It will change the way you see yourself and your world in a lot of ways. So you want to get up above it, get up high, get broad view, because when you do that, you have a greater understanding for what's really going on with yourself and your planet and why you are here. And, you know, you are multidimensional. So to try and understand you're in different places other than this platform of Earth is another thing as well. So it depends on how far you want to go with it, but... Love never dies. I can tell you that. Love never dies. And those that have gone before us that will transition will be there for us and receive us when we go as we will receive those under us in the sense that, you know, it could be generations or whoever goes first. Love never dies. It is always there and growing. It never goes away. It's pure and when you start to remember that, remember who you are, you'll start to remember what that non-physical life is beyond this life. And I just want to finish on um, a note of helping people to understand the taboo subject, taboo, of suicide. Because what happens with suicide is when some, when you're so connected to who you are, and you feel that strong source, it's wonderful. But when something happens and you move right away from who you are, your soul is still here, adoring you, loving you. If that being cannot, cannot find their way back to that love, because that's who we are, that's what we want to return to. In this physical life, they can sometimes go, but then they might go back. They can get close and they go back. And they kind of notch in. And they find it very hard to get out of that groove of depression or whatever it is. What they do is the call is so strong. They so want relief. They so want love and to be loved. They so want to go like a moth to the flame to that love, that light, that they go to the other side. But it comes full circle because what they're actually going to is returning to who they really are, which is love. Now, I'm not, I'm not suggesting it. I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying anything about it other than when you can understand what that call feels like because I myself have experienced depression and I so just wanted to go because you can feel that call at, at one time in my life. And um, thank God I didn't. However, 
I understand it. This is what happens with people. The call is so strong to love that people just want to feel good and they can't find their way there. And sometimes they do awful things to people because they think it'll make them feel better. And if they can't find their way there, they go what looks like the other way. They jump to the other side, you see. So I'm not saying, you know, either way for someone to do that or suggest that. I'm just helping people to understand what is actually going on. The call of source is so powerful. Your soul is powerful. It loves and adores you. It calls you to feel better. It wants you to release. It wants you to feel. It wants you to come over here and have the party in the physical life. That's what it wants. And you don't have to be bouncing off the walls, experiencing joy all the time. You can just be feeling contentment. You can be feeling peace. You can just be feeling some happiness. You can just be feeling contentment is enough. Contentedness. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I've really just wanted to share this, give you some light on, maybe get you to question. There is more beyond this physical life and you are experiencing it by letting it in and know that when it is your time, you are received fully into the, the, the goodness and the love of who you are. And when you're ready and the time comes, that know that there are loved ones there for you and know that it is so unconditional and pure it's love that you feel when, I mean, the only way I can experience it because everyone's different is the love that you feel when you fall in love with someone the love that you feel when you have a baby, it's that's next level. So it's different for everyone because not everyone has babies and not everyone's fallen in love, but you may have fallen in love with something, your dog, a horse, anything. You can feel love in many ways. In fact, it's everywhere. You can feel it by looking at a vehicle or a car that you want. You can just love it. There are some people that just loved their car all their life. It gave them so much joy. It was a part of them. And that's what it's all about. It's really us experiencing and expanding to more of who we are and letting more love in and opening up that heart chakra, you know, and that upper heart chakra. So I hope this has been helpful. It's big soul love from me and bye for now.